Hey everyone, it's Mojax back in the DJ City UK lab and I'm actually celebrating a bit of an anniversary this week and that is because it is three years almost to the day since I did my first ever DJ Technology YouTube video back on my own channel and that was a walkthrough of the Native Instruments Tractor Control Z1. Now this is one that I bought subsequently and have used a lot over that three years. You know, it's basically, it's not a mixer, it controls software mixer within Traktor. You've got faders, EQs, and so on. You've got an audio interface in there with RCA outputs and with a Q output on the front. And I found this to just be a dead handy bit of kit to have around. You know, it's the kind of thing where you turn up at a gig and you've got a terrible broken mixer that you've got to plug into, put this in between your software and the mixer, and this will get you out of trouble. If you're working on a really small space, this is perfect as well. When Traktor DJ was a thing, on the iPad, this was great for that as well. Unfortunately, Tractor DJ seems to be dead right now. But it's kind of funny to me that here I am, three years and 130 videos later, I'm reviewing the Reloop Mix Tour, which on paper and in practice is a very similar device. And this is designed, yeah, for DJ Pro on the iPad, DJ 2 on your phone, I've tried it with that as well. Also is automatically mapped to DJ Pro on the Mac. And it's very flexible too, because it's full, just regular MIDI it's sending out of here. There's no weirdness going on. You can map it to Traktor. Reloop have a Traktor mapping available, virtual DJ mapping. You can map it to Record Box as well if you want. Really the only big platform this is not gonna work with is Serato DJ. And of course that's for the limitations of you can't use the sound card and it just, it's not gonna work basically. So everything else this will work with really nicely. Now it is, as I say, not a mixer. Like the Z1, this is not a mixer. This is a controller for software mixing. So you've got no inputs on there. You've got RCA outputs on the back and a Q output on the front on a small jack. Now the RCA output is nice and loud. It is definitely got some volume to it. I've used this in a club. I plugged it into a channel of a DJM 900 Nexus and the volume I was getting out of it was great. Sound quality was great as well. Using DJ Pro on the iPad and the Mix Tour you'd be hard pushed to tell any difference between that and playing off the CDJs that were also hooked into that mixer. So very impressed with the sound quality and the sound volume. You do have to use the power supply if you're using it with iOS, but of course that's kind of important because you also need to charge your iOS device and that will do this at the same time. So you've got both power for the mix tour and for your iOS device. Now, whilst it does charge the average iOS device quite happily as you hooked up to it, one thing to note is that it will not charge the iPad Pro, the large iPad Pro that I've got here. The battery does gradually go down over the course of a night. Now, it will easily get you through a long set, there's no question about that, especially if you start off fully charged, but it's something to note, and I'm not sure if that will apply to the 9.7 inch iPad Pro as well. It just doesn't put out quite enough power. In terms of controls, it's all there. You've got faders, you've got Q on and off, you've got um, scrolling for your library, and you've also got dedicated load buttons for each deck. You've got filter knobs. Let's just get something playing there quickly. So you can filter up and down, plus you've got filter effects as well. So you can have an echo or whatever, and you filter at the same time. And you can select your different effects by holding shift and all these features do generally have shift functions on them as well, which is good to hear. Nice loud headphone output too. And unlike the Z1, which was very kind of limited in terms of actual controls that you had on there, this has got these four pads on each deck. So we've got play and cue, you've got a sync button, loop on, and then you can also halve and double it on the shift function. You can adjust the grids from there as well. And you've got cue points. So we've got four cue points, and these are kind of clicky buttons. They are not pads as such. You're not gonna be doing any mad cue juggles or anything like that with it, but for doing what you're doing, playing on an iPad at a bar gig or something, it's gonna work perfectly well, you know, absolutely fine. Um, construction is all plastic, but that is to be expected because A, it's a MIDI controller, it's not a full-on mixer, but also you don't really want that. You want something that's gonna be light and portable, and in terms of the solidity of it, I've got no complaints at all. Um, the one complaint I do have, and it's it's kind of a small thing, but at the same time it is annoying because I did mention this in the review of DJ Pro with the BeatPad 2 from Reloop, and that had a really short proprietary cable going from the BeatPad 2 into the iPad, the lightning connector, and this has got the same cable. It's really short. Now, with the beat pad, you can kind of almost understand it because it had the little slot to put the iPad in the back. This doesn't have that. You've got flexibility to put your iPad where you want 
except the cable is crazy short. I'd like that cable to be at least a foot long, if not two foot, even three foot, to give you that flexibility to place stuff where you wanna place it. But that's really my only kind of complaint. It's performed well with the iPad. I've played out with it with the iPad. It's performed fine with DJ Pro on the Mac and with my phone. I've been messing around with it on my phone. Now it does come with this OTG adapter cable thingy for Android. Now I haven't used it with Android. I'm not an Android person. And I've heard mixed reports from DJs that I know about the performance of the mix tool with Android. So please do let us know down in the comments what your experiences have been, if you've tried that, positive or negative. It's 200 bucks, right? $200 in the US street price. And that is the same as the Control Z1. And at this point, I would definitely take the Mix Tour over the Control Z1 because the Mix Tour can be mapped to Tractor quite happily. This will work with pretty much anything. And the Z1 really didn't. You know, you could put it into mini mode with your computer, but on the iPad, you were just kind of stuck with Tractor DJ, which is basically a dead platform. Now, DJ, on the other hand, is very much alive. They've just won some big Apple Design Award, you know. It's a very popular app and it will no doubt continue to be so for a while. So if you're investing in something now, I think the Mix Tour is definitely a big you know, choice over the Z1. I'm definitely gonna go for the Mix Tour because that would be the one that you can use for Tractor and you can use it for loads of other stuff. The Z1 is kind of locked down a bit too much. The other option out there, of course, is the Akai AMX. And that's a trickier one because the AMX does a bit more than the Mix Tour. I mean, the AMX is for Serato DJ. If you buy the DVS plugin, you can use it with DVS. It has inputs for turntables and it has the mini inner fader in there as well for cutting and so on. And I know a few people who've bought the AMX and been really happy with it, but not everyone is a Serato DJ user. You know, if you're new to DJing, it's gonna be a hard choice, which ecosystem you wanna jump into. This is gonna be great for Tractor and for DJ, and it's gonna give you a lot more flexibility whereas the AMX is, is pretty much a Serato DJ device. You're paying a little bit for that Serato DJ functionality. And that's $250 street price, as opposed to 200 for the Mix Tour. So you'd have to think very carefully about which one is gonna suit you best. But if you're looking for something for DJ, or for Tractor, or for Virtual DJ, something that's gonna allow you to actually mini-map and work with any audio interface that you want, the Mix Tour is a good choice. And yeah, if I was buying one today, it would definitely be this, it would not be this. As much as I've loved having this, the Mix Tour just has the flexibility these days that the Z1 doesn't. So there you go, yeah, I like it a lot. Thank you for watching today. Make sure you subscribe for all our future tips, tricks, and product reviews. I'll see you soon.